So, locomotion and reproduction in protozoa as you as you asked locomotion and reproduction in protozoa. Actually, the same is uh, given for human anatomy, how you know locomotion and movement, that is the name of the chapter in human anatomy, but as per the IP book, this is important, weight is also there, 10 marks, weight is, is there, 2, 4 marks and 1, 2 marks, question, 1, 4 mark question from uh, locomotion, another 4 marks question from reproduction. So, there are so many expected questions, types of pseudopodia, types of flagella, bending movement of uh, flagella and cilia, ciliary movement, they are all from under, under the locomotion. And here, longitudinal bind diffusion and uh, transverse bind diffusion, multiple fission. These are the main three, four mass questions in the reproduction. So, Definitely one from locomotion, one from reproduction, you will get four marks questions. Two marks questions from any of these two, they may be given because total weightage is 10 marks. But anyhow, you have asked me and uh, we are we are uh, starting today. You all know locomotion definition and movement definitions are uh, totally different. And that's why all movements are not locomotion, but all locomotions are movements. Without movement, there is no locomotion. That's why all locomotions are movements. But movement is there without locomotion because our uh, without uh, replacement of a position, without changing position, if the uh, any part of the body moves, it is called movement. For example, limbs, we can move like this, jaws. We are, when we are speaking, jaws and tongue are moving, eyelids also move. So, like that, so on and so forth, there are so many organs which can move, but in their own place, they don't displace their place. So, replacement of place is not there, and without any changing position, then the movement, uh, the, the body parts are moved, that is, even uh, plants also, they... Plants' movement is called orientation. What is orientation? Towards sunlight where the sunlight is there towards that the body parts of the plants will move like leaves, branches, etc. bend towards the sunlight. The change of direction of sunlight if it is there, the, their body parts movement also change towards that light. That's why it is orientation movement, tropism. This movement is called phototropism. So, plants exhibit movements but never exhibit locomotion. And our body parts exhibit movement but not locomotion. But if any organism change their place from, uh, they move from one place to another place, that is called locomotion. So, this is introduction, first phase. Locomotion generally occurs for what purpose? For uh, some food and shelter, main basic needs for all organisms is food and uh, shelter. And main uh, basic needs. And then opposite mate for reproductive purpose, for producing their young ones offspring, reproduction must be there. So, for which opposite, searching of opposite mate also helps in. And uh, they, they detect the enemies and avoid the enemies uh, and protect themselves from the enemies by the locomotion. By escaping from that space, they can be protected from the predators and the enemies. Predators are the best enemies for the any organism. So, thus, <coughs> This is the significance of locomotion. What are the most important functions of locomotion? Locomotory movements, you all know, walking, running, swimming, flying, climbing. There are so on and so forth. There are so many movements are the creeping, crawling. All these are locomotions, types of locomotions. Now, <coughs> you see the locomotion in protozoa. In protozoa, the simplest locomotion, you know, the most simplest movement of protozoans is protoplasmic streaming movements. Of course, this is given in the NCRT book, in the locomotion and movement chapter, it is given. 
locomotor protoplasmic streaming movements is the most important and the simplest movement in the living organisms especially protoplasmic streaming movement observed in unicellular animals unicellular animals belong to phylum protozoa so that is the protoplasmic streaming movements are the most simplest movements of the fall movements in the living organisms and then <coughs> so now let us take the types of locomotor organelles in protozoa first locomotor organelles simple definition cellular extensions of the body cellular extension suppose if it is asked by anybody your answer must be pseudopodia cellular extensions of the body pseudo means false podia means feet false feet that's why the name is given pseudopodia like our feet they walk on the surface of the land so that's why cellular extensions are pseudopodia and uh, short hair like projections short hair like locomotor organs if it is asked your answer must be cilia and long whip like structures this is in the first paragraph second uh, page reproduction is given we will discuss about the unnecessary time waste that's why third page i have directly entered from first page to third page because in third page these are given so cellular extension pseudopodia first paragraph short hair like uh, locomotor organelles of uh, protozoans or cilia long whip like structures are uh, flagella long whip like structures are flagella and besides that contractile fibrils contractile fibers don't say contractile fibrils you better you say because these are unicellular contractile fibrils are myonemes they are myonemes so these are the four types of locomotor organs organelles better you say pseudopodia cilia flagella and lastly myonemes so these are the four types of so their uh, definition simple definition is see cellular extensions of the body pseudopodia short hair like structures of the body cilia long whip like structures flagella and contractile fibrils myonemes just below the pellicle they are located myonemes are located so this is about the types of uh, uh, locomotor organelles now let us take the first pseudopodia one by one we go for discussion we take first pseudopodia pseudopodia basing on the structure structural modifications these are four types four types of pseudopodia are present this is a four marks question also write an account of types of pseudopodia in the question bank you have seen already so here is is it take four types of pseudopodia basing on that what are those four types you know lobopodia are the pseudopodia they are blunt finger like for this definition is uh, different blunt finger like pseudopodia are called lobopodia examples very simple scoring type question this is for four marks question if it comes out of four you will get definitely four marks so there is such a very simple question four types of pseudopodia are there pseudopodia are present in the class which class of protozoa rhizopoda rhizopoda in which these locomotor organelles are present pseudopodia belongs to which class of protozoa rhizopoda rhizo means root poda means legs root like legs that's why it is the name class name rhizopoda example amoeba and amoeba 
two examples are generally given amoeba and amoeba only amoeba you can write down you need not worry about the second example blunt finger like pseudopodia or lobopodia and second one fiber like pseudopodia phyllopodia phyllopodia is a second type simple definition fiber like you can also say filament like pseudopodia they are like filaments fiber like pseudopodia fiber like pseudopodia phyllopodia example euglypha to some extent it is difficult to remember euglypha not that much familiar example hence uh, try to pronounce it uh, instead of one time or two times several times you pronounce it euglypha euglypha like that you know so then automatically it will come amoeba and tamoeba anyhow they are very familiar so euglypha second example phyllopodia lecithium also their second example of course not given unnecessarily why you dump the material because they for this only it is very difficult that's why euglypha enough and then reticulopodia reticulopodia or net like pseudopodia they are like net so the anastomosing with this cytoplasmic process come out of the body and uh, anastomosing like this form a network so that's why net like pseudopodia or reticulopodia here also two examples are there elphidium and globigerina but only remember elphidium a shelled protozoan lives in the sea water a shelled protozoan elphidium in which reticulopodia type of pseudopodia are present and then last and final axopodia axopodia axo means race sun race like pseudopodia axopodia also called helicopodia heliopodia sorry heliopodia helio means sun heliopodia sun race like pseudopodia these are like a sun ray hence sun rays like pseudopodia or axopodia or heliopodia or actinopodia other name is also there but not given in the book but if you want you can note down that other name also actinopodia more information it will come under so that's why not necessary what is given in the book it is enough more than axopodia or heliopodia or actinopodia are the other names of the sun rays like pseudopodia example actinophrys actinosperium actinosphrys two two examples previously it was given now it is only limited to one example actinophrys looks like a sun hand sun animal cule common name so these are the four types of pseudopodia here this is four mass question from this the uh, two mass question also is there distinguish between lobopodia and phyllopodia that question is there i think so that is two mass question these two you must write down blunt finger like lobopodia example amoeba and fiber like pseudopodia phyllopodia example you glyph that's all so totally for for four mass question first four mass question from this chapter we have completed then amoeboid movement then you start this amoeboid movement locomotion with pseudopodia is called amoeboid movement or pseudopodial movement like that you can say first locomotion method in the protozoa is amoeboid locomotion then flagella then ciliary locomotion and lastly gliding locomotion amoeboid movement this is also assisted by pseudopodia hence also called pseudopodial movement by the formation of pseudopodia in the direction of movement this locomotion occurs pseudopodial movement this is amoeboid locomotion also called pseudopodial locomotion and the slowest locomotion in protozoa another important point is slowest locomotion very slow not fastest fastest locomotion is being ciliary and the slowest locomotion is amoeboid locomotion and most primitive locomotion most primitive locomotion also amoeboid locomotion this is most primitive locomotion okay and uh, there are several thesis 
theories put forward to discuss about this amoeboid locomotion before that the you take amoeba in which the outer gel like plasma gel is called ectoplasm of course in the book it is wrongly written i already i asked you to change that ectoplasm is a gel plasma gel and endoplasm is a plasma sol so ectoplasm outer ectoplasm is plasma gel and inner endoplasm is plasma sol it is a fluid part of the all unicellular organisms especially protozoans outer ectoplasm also called plasma gel and inner endoplasm also called plasma sol so these two are interconvertible these two local um, substances are interconvertible that is physical change gel becomes sol and uh, sol becomes gel while formation of pseudo podium hence these two are interconvertible gel to sol and sol to gel so that interconvertible can be given the reaction like this sol and this symbol you should write down here then automatically it will be gel to sol and again sol to gel they are converted so this this is the most important sol gel conversion theory that's why this amoeboid locomotion is explained by this theory which is called sol gel convert sol gel conversion theory because both are interconvertible that's why this theory is called sol gel conversion theory sol is converted into gel by losing water molecules and gel is converted into sol by gaining water molecules but regarding amoeboid locomotion uh, one controversy is there one uh, controversy in the sense uh, different uh, opinions are there for example sol to gel and gel to sol the gel contractility basing on which there is a controversy there is a different opinions so allen's fountain zone theory allen's fountain zone theory or front contra contraction theory allen scientist his theory is called allen's fountain zone theory or it is also called front contraction theory gel contracts anterior end that's why it is called front contraction theory according to this theory the pseudopodia formation due to the contraction of gel in the front region that's why it is called front contraction theory also called just like water coming from fountain the cytoplasm flows endoplasm flows and form the pseudopodia in the direction of movement according to theory this is also considered and acceptable theory more considered theory this is also and more ca- acceptable theory that is also sol gel conversion theory also and another theory is also there that is what is that another theory you know Mm. <clears throat> actin myosin theory actin and myosin proteins they roll rolling of protein theory protein rolling theory actin myosin rolling theory these two are the proteins present in the cytoplasm of amoeba and uh, when they are folded like this when these two proteins are folded like this which is formed when these are unfolded like this which is from this is unfolding of protein molecules this is folding of protein molecules this theory tells about of course details not given in the book so when the folding of protein molecules occurs sol so plasma sol is formed when the unfolding of protein molecules occurs plasma gel is formed so that's why that equation already it is given there um plasma gel arrow mark plus water molecules leads to solution and uh, minus water molecules formed into plasma gel formed into plasma sol that is solution and plasma sol after losing molecules water molecules converts into plasma gel this phenomenon is gelation and pseudopodia formation occurs in the direction of movement that equation is given you turn the page turn the page and first equation it is there that is there pseudopodia formation occurs in the direction of movement 
so you remember this plasma gel uh, by gaining water molecules it becomes plasma sol that process is called solution and uh, by losing water molecules the sol becomes gel that is called gelation the pseudopodia formation takes place so that is the main uh, uh, concept of the sol gel interconversion theory okay so this is the slowest locomotion already i have mentioned in our human body amoeboid movement is also there not only amoeba not only protozoans exhibit amoeboid movement amoeboid movement also some of the cells exhibit in our human body amoeboid movement in humans are shown by amoeboid cells are shown by amoeboid cells macrophages are amoebocytes simply amoebocytes macrophages and lastly neutrophils and neutrophils one of the most important w b c microscopic for policemen phagocyte cells neutrophils so these three cells in the human body also exhibit the amoeboid movement in humans this is important 19th point slowest locomotion of all protozoan locomotions amoeboid locomotion the most primitive also amoeboid locomotion so this is about the amoeboid movement theory then let us come to the structure of flagellum flagella are the locomotor organs of class mastigophora that is rhizopoda mastigo means whip foro means bearing hence the name mastigo for a whip bearing structures long whip like structures are flagella already we have mentioned so flagella the mastigo force mastigo refers to flagella actually whip like structure correct meaning is whip so this flagellum of uh, flagellum and cilium both have the st structurally similar features are there flagellum and cilium singular cilium singular flagellum flagella plural cilia plural flagellum and cilium have the following structures so these following structures you have to carefully very important because the structure of axonym is given for four marks question that's why the first one is axonym put a heading axonym a supporting rod like structure of the flagellum and cilium a supporting straight microtubular structure because it is made up of microtubules so this is a supporting rod of both flagella and cilia supporting straight tubular structure straight microtubular structure better you say like that microtubular structure axonym axonym is made up of each axonym is made up of how many you know axonym is equal to number of microtubules how many you know 2 plus is equal to 2 plus 18 that is equal to 20 microtubules are there two single uh, central tubules and nine peripheral double tubules so that's when 9 into 2 18 18 plus 2 20 number of microtubules with which the axonym is made up of that is 20 of course not given but this arrangement is given like this 9 plus 2 array arrangement of these microtubules given like 9 plus 2 array so already you know the diagram this is outer sheath and this one is inner sheath and these are the singlets and these are the doublets b doublet a doublet inner b doublet and outer a doublet again b doublet a doublet b doublet a doublet so like that out of these nine peripheral doublets the outer one is smaller one complete one and the inner one b doublet is larger one incomplete one why it is complete you know from which dynamic norms arise that's why it is complete so one more we have to draw here so total nine that's why you have to draw the uh, one more also like this so this is 
9 peripheral tablets so this is outer sheath and this one is inner sheath and from a doublets these dynamics arise and these doublets are peripheral doublets are internally connected by nexins nexin arms nexin proteins like this these are uh, dynamics and in the center nexin uh, proteins are present linker proteins are present these are called nexin proteins and this dark one is nexin protein the darker one and from peripheral tubule to connecting to a tubule connecting to a tubule these uh, spoke like structures arise these spokes are called radial spokes these are radial spokes like cycle wheel so this is the ts flagellum and uh, ts axonym ts cilium 9 plus 2 array nine doublets and two singlets are there so that is the microtubular structure of the axonym so 21 point is microtubular arrangement this is and then followed by dynamics the protein dynin with which these arms are made up of dynamics always arise from a tubules arise from a tubule you say out of doublet a tubule of peripheral doublet gives rise to these dynin arms these are protein motor molecules dyno means push so there is a protein motor molecules atp is activity occurs and uh, they are pulling the neighboring doublets in opposite directions that is the function of dynin arms that's why these are protein motor molecules dynin is a protein motor means pushing the doublets in opposite directions that's why motor molecules protein motor molecules dynin arms very important point this is always arise from a tubule already right written here dynin arms are originated from a tubule that's why a tubules are though they are smaller they are complete outer peripheral doublets are a inner peripheral doublets are b that is about the doublets and dynin arms and then sheaths inner sheath and outer sheath singlets are enclosed by outer sheath inner sheath this is inner sheath and doublets are enclosed by outer sheath these two sheaths are there then next heading is radial spokes elastic fibers these are nothing but elastic fibers don't forget to write about that radial spokes are nothing but elastic fibers made up of elastic fibers how many radial spokes are there there are also nine from outer sheath, inner sheath of the central tubules the radial spokes arise radially attached to connected to a tubule like that they are in clockwise direction they are attached these radial spokes limit the sliding movement of the doublets limit limit the sliding past movement sliding past movement of peripheral doublets of doublets simply write down doublets doublets nothing but peripheral doublets that is the function of the radial spokes like the rim of the bicycle how the spokes are connected to the axis and rim thus here also there this is like an axis of the cycle and this is like a rim like that they are attached so radial spokes then basal granules next heading basal granule also called r blepharoplast basal granule also known as blepharoplast r basal body r kinetosome all are one and the same they are also called kinetosomes basal granule or a blepharoplast basal body or kinetosome these are the other four other names are there from what cell organelle they are originated you know the basal granules are originated from centrioles centrioles are the cell organelles from which the basal granules this should be underlined in the book from the centriole you are all following a srujana satvika prabha varshita hello yes sir yes sir Oh, okay now nah. centriole is the cell organelle from which the basal granules are 
originated. So each basal granule is made up of how many nine triplets? Each basal granule or basal body made up of nine triplets. Here no singlets and doublets. Nine triplets they are called. So nine triplets in the sense nine triplets in the sense nine into three. So number of microtubules. Of course, this will not be given. We are calculating that, basing on the triplets. Number of microtubules in basal granule. Total basal granule. How many you know? Nine into three, twenty-seven triplets. So that is one triplet is equal to three microtubules. Nine into three, twenty-seven. Microtubules are there, so these microtubules are arranged like this. This is the structure of the basal granule. Here, these are the triplets. They are arranged like this. So, inner to outer, these microtubules are named as A, B, C. This is A, inner one. Next, B. Next, C microtubule. So, this is one triplet. Like that, nine triplets are arranged in this manner. Okay, and last triplet, this one. There are no singlets here. From this, A B directly cross the basal plate. A B of triplet, A B tubules of triplet cross the can cross the basal plate. At the base of the axoneme, there is a basal plate. So this basal plate is crossed by A B tubules, but not C. C come up to the basal plate and do not cross. But uh, AB tubules cross the uh, basal plate and enter into the axoneme as doublets. So the AB tubules of uh, basal granules are nothing but the precursors of peripheral doublets of the axoneme. That is about this. And then, if you turn the page here, the basal granule. Is connected to connected to plasma membrane on one side and nucleus on the other side. This sentence is the last one. You remember very carefully. And nucleus on the other side with communication channels. These are called rootlets. These are known as rootlets. Rootlets cause the orientation of the movement of flagellum and cilium, change of directions and all these things. So the basal granule connected to plasma membrane and nucleus with communication channels called the rootlets, which help in the orientation of both flagella and cilia. And last and final heading. This is, I think, seventh heading. First heading is axoneme. Second heading is microtubules. Third heading is dynamics. Fourth heading is inner sheath and outer sheath. Fifth heading is radial spokes. Sixth one basal granule, and seventh one lateral appendages of flagellum. These lateral appendages are also called mastogonemes. Short hair-like projections come on the edges of the flagellum. They are known as mastogonemes. Known as mastigo names. So, basing on mastigo names, let us classify the five types of flagella. Basing on presence or absence of mastigo names, how many flagella are there? Five types of flagella. This is another four marks question. Okay, another four marks question. Five types of flagella are there. The first one, five first type of flagella is trichonematic flagellum. Stichonematic flagellum in which this is basal granule and this is flagellum. Here the mastogonemes present only on one side. Example: Euglena and Astasia. Two examples are given. Two two examples are given. Here Euglena and Astasia are the two examples for the stichonematic flagellum. And second one is pantonematic flagellum. Pantonematic means on either side of the axoneme, 
the mastogonemes are present. Suppose this is basal granule and this is flagellum. On either side, these mastogonemes are attached. So that is called pantonematic. Example, pantonematic for which the example is peranema and monas. Here also two examples are there. Acronematic uh, flagellum. Acronematic flagellum in this mastogonemes are absent. This is basal granule and this is flagellum. Here there is a naked uh, terminal filament occurs. Naked terminal filament. This is basal granule. Acronematic without mastogonemes. So flagellum without mastogonemes but naked terminal filament. That is acronematic. Example Chlamydomonas and Polytoma. Chlamydomonas and uh, polytoma are the examples. Somewhat difficult for you to remember these examples. Anyhow, you are listening uh, um, again and again. That's why you can uh, try to make it practice. Eugrina astasia here, Paranima monas here, Chlamydomonas and polytoma here. And the 35th one, that, that's the fourth type of flagellum, pantachronematic. Means it is a combined combination of both pantonematic and uh, Acronematic. In this, the basal granule is here, and here, the on either side, mastogonemes are present like this on either side, and terminal filament also there, naked terminal filament. So, both terminal filament and mastogonemes, if they are present, it is pantachronematic. Example, Aracelus. Aracelus. And last one is anematic. No mastogonemes and no naked terminal filament. Anematic also called simple flagellum. Here the basal granule is present with uh, without any naked filament and mastogonemes. Neither naked filaments nor mastogonemes present. Anematic flagellum. Example Chylomonas and Cryptomonas. Here also two examples are there. Chylomonas and uh, Cryptomonas are the two examples. So two two examples. Five types of flagella based on the lateral appendages. Mastigo names. Uh, Stichonematic, pantonematic, acronematic, pantachronematic, and anematic. One side mastigo names are there, stichonematic, Eugrina astasia. Mm, if both the sides are mastigo names are present uh, to the towards axonym, it is pantonematic. Example, Paranema monas. Uh, no mastigo names, but naked terminal filament is present, acronematic, lambda monas, and polytoma. Both terminal filament as well as mastogonemes present, that is pantachronematic RCLS, and both are absent. Both neck terminal filament and mastogonemes are absent. That is anematic or simple example Chylomonas and Cryptomonas. And uh, today's class, last and final topic is number of flagella in some of the mastogophores. Number of flagella, types of flagella over number of flagella. So, first one, one flagellum. One flagellum is present in example trypnosoma. Example trypnosoma. Two unequal flagella. Suppose they are present. Two unequal flagella. One is shorter than and one is longer one. Two unequal flagella, euglina. And uh, four flagella. Trichomonas. Four flagella are present. Eight flagella are four pairs of flagella. Eight. Eight flagella, Giardia. And lastly, many flagella. Many flagella, Trichonympha. So, this is number of flagella. Least number, one, Trypnosoma. And highest number, Trichonympha. Many flagella are there. Okay, already locomotion repression started, pseudopodia and flagella we have completed. Structure of flagellum cilium also completed. Tomorrow cilia we can see. And okay, can I stop today? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, can I stop? Bye, thank you. Okay, ma.